So continuing to look at the organic chemistry topic and the hydrocarbon subtopic, and in part B, we are going to look at the physical properties of hydrocarbons. And in particular, we're going to look at the physical properties of the alkanes that we talked about before. And those physical properties that we're going to look at are the boiling point and melting point. And that's going to relate to what we looked at earlier in the year about secondary interactions. So a good little bit of revision of secondary interactions. Let's get into it. So alkanes and alkenes, for that matter, are both nonpolar. Sorry, just get a little typo there. Alkanes and alkenes are both nonpolar. Why are they both nonpolar? Well, they either contain carbon-carbon bonds, which are nonpolar because both carbon atoms would have the same electronegativity, so the shared pair of electrons would sit equally between the bonds, uh, equally between the atoms. So there wouldn't be one charged, one end with more charge than the other. And carbon-hydrogen bonds are also nonpolar. That's because carbon and hydrogen have a similar electronegativity. So there isn't a big enough difference in the electronegativity between carbon and hydrogen for it to be, um, to be defined as a, a polar bond. Um, so again, you don't get those dipoles forming due to polar bonds with the carbon-hydrogen bonds. So you have non-polar molecules. So the secondary interactions between the molecules, the non-polar hydrocarbon molecules here we're talking about, are dispersion forces. My typing here is not, well, my writing here is not very good today. So they are all dispersion forces. Now, we already know that the dispersion forces are the weakest form of secondary bonding. Um, after dispersion forces, you have dipole-dipole, and then after dipole-dipole, you have hydrogen bonding, which is a special example of dipole-dipole bonding with oxygen and hydrogen atoms. But the strength of the dispersion forces depends on the number of electrons or the molecular mass in the compound. So therefore, as molecules get bigger, the boiling point and melting points increase. What do we mean? A little example here, we have propane. Propane has three carbons, eight hydrogens, molecular mass of 44.1. Got the structural formula here. It has a melting point of minus 188 degrees Celsius and a boiling point of 40, minus 42 degrees Celsius. So this will boil... Um, you know, below zero. Um, this is what's in LPG, the main ingredient of LPG that's used in gas bottles um, for barbecues, um, also in a lot of car, well, not a lot of cars, but used in some cars for fuel as well. We also have here octane. Octane, eight carbons, 18 hydrogens, has a molecular mass of 114.23. Drawing out the condensed structural formula here. This is actually one of the main ingredients in petrol, which we know petrol is a liquid at room temperature. It has a melting point of minus 57 degrees. That's handy so that your fuel doesn't freeze on a cold morning. That wouldn't be very good for your engine. And it has a boiling point of 125 degrees. So you can see as the molecular mass here increases, the melting point increases and the boiling point increases also. So, Hopefully now you can compare the melting points and boiling points of hydrocarbons given relevant information, i.e. either their molecular mass or their structural formula that you can work out their molecular mass from.